Holloman Air Force Base just outside of Alamogordo has become a training ground for the next generation of unmanned aircraft pilots. Two of these planes are the MQ-1 and the more powerful MQ-9. Pilots don't sit inside the plane but control it from seats that look just like the inside of a cockpit. Anthony, a captain at Holloman Air Force Base, is now an MQ-9 instructor and was one of the first to finish training at Holloman. Uh, we had a lieutenant colonel come to my base. He spoke to us and told us about the capabilities and the future possibilities in the airframe. And it sounded like something that I think thought would be cool, so I volunteered. He went through the second flight unit that trained here at Holloman. From then on, I went operational, spent three and a half years operational, and then came back here to teach. It takes six months to a year to be trained to fly one of these planes, far from the image of a drone that's sent out on autopilot. There's, there's no point in time when this aircraft is operating on its own. There's always a pilot and there's always going to be a sensor in the seat controlling every move that the aircraft makes. The idea of remotely controlled or unmanned aircraft has been around for quite a while. Historian James Barrett says it goes back to the 1860s. During the Civil War they used balloons initially. Uh, not terribly successful, very inaccurate. They relied on a timer. There was nobody, no radio control at that point. The technology progressed from radio-guided bombs in World War II to the laser-guided missiles that can be launched from the MQ-1 and MQ-9. They're actively used to um, observe an area, if necessary, attack targets within that area. But it's, it's a progression that began back in 1863. Jeff Patton, a commander at Holloman, says the base trains both pilots that haven't flown before and those that flew other types of planes. We also train new RPA pilots from scratch, and so our challenge is to train those brand new student pilots up to the same level as the inexperienced pilot that crosses over from another platform. Either way, the most important challenge is doing a lot of things at once. I think the hardest thing about operating the platform is that there are so many different uh, forms of communication coming into a, a GCS, uh, and so it's uh, multitasking is the biggest challenge uh, for pilots to learn as they go through the program. Using remotely piloted planes makes sense. They cost less and use fewer resources, and more importantly, they keep pilots safe on the ground if something were to happen to one of the planes. It's pretty much the way of the future. You know, there's a lot of things and a lot of capabilities that this aircraft has uh, that's going to help us in the future, so I've been excited to be a part of that development. From Holloman Air Force Base, Sloan Patton, KRWG News.